So please, I'm going to beg you to please get out a small recorder. See, I want to show you what I have. I come prepared. I have little recorders. All right? This is tiny. Look how tiny they are. They're $60. They're $60. You can buy a, record, a, a tape machine. The tapes are a dollar. If you all, and I give you my commitment, and Lynn will know I do this all the time, and some people take me up on it, some people are shy, but I hope you all will not be shy. If you all promise to record each other, I will send you recorders at no expense to you, all right? You can take this apart and download, I think this is right. digital, right? You're right, it's digital. You, uh, the ones I will send you, not this one, you take it out, and the young students will know, you stick it into the USB port, and you download this software, and boom, you have the audio recordings. It's so easy. It's three steps. Okay, how many, yes? I just want to say my husband's uh, hesitant to say, but his grandfather uh, was just honored uh, as a one of the pioneers of the mission in Callan, Texas, and, and I know he's been recorded, and I mean, there's stories that I've heard of him selling Pancho Villa's his first car, and wow. all kinds of things started wow. with that story. So where are the recordings? My uncle has them. Your uncle has them. So he's going to give you copies. Well, I'm going to go down there and record some of the stories. I like how you talk. See the yeah. confidence? I'm going to go down there. I'm good, I'm good for you. I've already recorded him speaking, but he's told stories
smell in, in terms of right. bringing memories back. Absolutely. Yeah. Terry, I'm just going to have you come up here and I'm going to sit down there. <laughs> just doing, absolutely. It is, I mean, how many of us have recordings of their family? Oh, we have a few. I got like three. Uh, she's, I, one, I you said yes. The male one. Have these people passed away since you first recorded them? I get a few nods. Yes. Yes. Do you play the tape every once in a while? No? Too hard? But you have her voice, huh? On some. On some. Was it your mom? But you have her voice. Powerful, huh? You have her voice. Let me tell you a quick story, and then I'll answer questions on this note. So I've been the director for the Institute of Oral History for 10 years. Um, I was in banking before. I've interviewed hundreds of people. I know. I've interviewed hundreds of people. My, that's just my job. I, I love my job. I love what I do. So um, my grandfather hit his 95th birthday. So I said, oh, you know, he's getting older. I need to interview him. So I did. I interviewed him, talked about his loves. <laughs> one, one, one wife uh, that we know of. Um, talked about his career and, and everything else. So it was a great interview. I talked to, um, time went on, got busy. I interviewed my grandmother, 90th birthday. It was great. You know, she talked about her love, and um, which is my grandfather. <laughs> Didn't want to disappoint her. I thought I'd hold on to the tape. I was like, okay. um, hold on to that. And you know, I'm very like very fortunate they're still living, and so won't we'll share that with the family until everyone's they're gone. But you know, I have their voices. I got real busy. Frostbite project took off. I, I I thought, you know, maybe I should interview my parents. You know what, they're in their 60s, they're young, they're full of life. No, I'm not going to be my parents yet, I'm going to wait. So I got busy, started going again, again, go travel, travel, as Dr. Denton will tell you, we travel a lot. And then life dealt me a blow. My dad had cancer, and my dad was dying. So I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I really need to talk to you, we need to do this interview. No, no, I'm not dying yet. You can't do this. I'm not dying yet. I'm still here. Okay, Dad. I have. I see nods. Okay, Dad. I'll wait till you're ready. I'm not going yet. He's a fighter. Okay. So I said, Okay, Dad. I'll wait. I'll wait for you. So he kept fighting. We thought he could beat cancer. Some people do. We thought he could. But then my mom got sick. She had pneumonia. They said she would be okay. She wasn't. She passed away days later. Five days later, my dad passed away from a broken heart and cancer. I'm the director of the Institute of Oral History, and I don't have their recordings. I don't have any audio. I have none. So my plea to you, the reason I'm here and I am begging, and I will send you whatever materials you need I need you to go interview each other. I need you to interview your family. I need you to, that everyone has a story to share. Everyone in this room should be interviewed because the power is in the story. So please, if it's an aunt, if it's an uncle, a sister, a brother, please think of me. Think of my teachable moment here, my crying like a, like a girl. Because I do all the time. Because I know, I know, I would give anything to hear her voice. Anything. I have no audio recordings. I don't even have VCR tapes. And that power of that voice. So please, please go interview your family. Send, I will help you. I will get you the materials you need. And I make it my personal commitment, my personal vow, until God takes me off this earth to help everyone in this room. Everyone that I talk to, make a recording of a family member. So I beg of you, please. It doesn't have to be perfect. The questions don't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be, you just got to do it. So please go out and do it. Thank you. Do you all have any questions? Any questions? Yes. After you record somebody, do you then put it in, uh, you know, you write it out, or do you just encourage us to? It's up to you. It's up to you. We can transcribe the interview. We can, um, we have no problem transcribing it, or you can, sometimes we just write, because transcribing is so expensive, it's like usually $600 or $1,000 per interview. I do really long interviews, I do like three hour interviews, I'm a talker, what a surprise. And so my interviews are like $1,000. But 
you know, in some cases, as long as we have the audio, we do a summary of the interview and then we archive it itself. I would love, and I will gladly share the interviews here with Texas State, have no doubt, but I would love to archive these at, at the Institute. and know that people, 100 years, when all of us are gone, they will be able to read about San Marcos. I will gladly help San Marcos or Texas State if they have, you know, help the center have the archives as well. So you can all say, on this day when I attended her lecture, they, she made me go out and interview someone. So like, who is this wicked woman? Yes, sir. Uh, is, is your project <coughs> the one that NPR would uh, uh, publish every so often, StoryCorps? Oh, don't you love StoryCorps? Yeah. I love StoryCorps. It is not. Okay. It is not. Because StoryCorps has a different, um, it's like, it's not as structured as we are, probably, and it is just going with someone you know. Just like if um, Elizabeth and I are just going to go, we're friends, we're going to just go and talk about our life back and forth. So with StoryCorps, although it's different, it's it's an amazing, if you have a StoryCorps booth that comes here, or if they, uh, is it here? It has been. It has been? I mean, get your copies, get your tapes, I mean, your CDs, they, they have, they're an amazing group, they're good people, I work with them, they're great people, but no, it's not. But it, it is a part, um, deposited at the Library of Congress, their archives. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yes, it has to do with how many people here have grandchildren who speak in school who ask them about their past. Okay, let's yeah. let's hear that. Did you hear a question? How many people have grandchildren or children that ask you about your past? Oh, very few. Okay.